Now comes the fun part, uh, putting some colour on here, the, the rust seal itself. Now, what you've got to do, same as the other one, make sure your can's open. I've already started this can, uh, started opening it, that is. So, open it. As you can see, this is black, this is a gloss black. And stir it through. And a bit stirring up. I can feel a little bit on the bottom there, but this one's not too bad. Now I'm going to tell you a couple of little tricks here. What you don't want to do is apply it straight from this can onto the job you're working on. It doesn't matter if it's your fuel tank, your chassis, whatever, because this is a urethane. It's a moisture cure type product. As soon as that comes into touch with the environment, a bit of moisture in the environment is going to make this start the chemical process for its curing. So what we do is we grab another can, just a little can, and Again, transfer a bit to there. Now I've put probably about 25 mil maybe in the bottom of that can, which is um, I think going to be enough to do this to do this fuel tank because it does actually cover about two and a half square meters for this um, 500 mil can. That's two coats, so we've got to put two coats on. This is why you need the gloves. See how messy I am at doing this sort of thing. Painting's not one of my uh, specialties. Now you can um, can wash your, your gloves out, oh, sorry, you can wash your brushes out with solvent afterwards, but for the price of these disposable brushes and the time it takes to clean it, I think it'll probably cost you just as much in, in thinners as it will with that. Now before I put that lid on, here's another one of these little tricks. We get a bit of uh, cling wrap, food wrap, put that over there and just push him down until it's touching the paint. What's that do? Two things. Minimises the air that's in contact with the, the rest of the product in there. And when I spilled it all in that groove, if I put this lid on, I'm never going to get this lid off because it will dry. So that provides a gasket again between the lid and the can. Now I'll actually go away now and actually clean that out a lot better than that before I do seal it. But I reckon that's going to be close to enough, um, enough coating itself for what I'm going to need. Yeah, you might say to yourself, why is he brushing it? Why doesn't he just spray it? Yeah, you can spray it if you want. But this is one of those self-leveling type coatings that the brush marks will be gone before you know it. Now we'll get rid of that off of the stirrer. Now using this one, what you can see is the way it's all sort of a milky white. That's that zinc phosphate coating I was telling you about. When we did the inside of the tank you couldn't see it in there but on the outside you can see it. We want that. That's the uh, the key that we require to make this coating stick. As I'm brushing that on, don't know if it's the right way or not but I tend to use the crosshatch method where you you do a bit one way and then a bit the other way and where it looks like it's got a heap of brush marks, we'll have a look at that in a couple of minutes time and it will have flowed out and it really does amaze me how far this this product does actually go. It's, you think it's very thin and watery but it just keeps on keeps on brushing out and brushing out. And Another thing I like to concentrate on is make sure you put some along that that roll welded seam is the way this works and the capillary action and everything that will actually get drawn into that um, into that seam. I'm actually doing the top of the tank first so that when I turn it over to paint the other side it won't really matter if a bit of this um, paint gets scratched because it's not where it gets seen on the top side. The coating itself you don't have to use black this is gloss black so it will dry up nice and glossy of course. You can get satin black, silver, grey. If you've got something like a, an alley tank or something like that you want to protect, you've polished up, you can also get clear. But I had this because I've got a chassis I've got to do. I'm also going to paint the, uh, the floors on the inside of the Butte because that has had a couple of water leaks and there's a bit of surface rust on the floor 
on the inside of the car, no holes all the way through, but if I put this on, that'll just make sure it doesn't go any further. So I had the black, that's why I'm going black. It really is a bit hard to see on camera, but this really is flowing out. There's brush marks. I can see them through there where I've just hit. And here where I've done before, just about gone. Well, that's one coat. A bit over half of that paint gone. Okay, we'll leave that to basically become touch dry. Once it's touch dry, we'll um, turn him back over and give it a second coat. You want to have two coats, or if it's in a, a harsh environment, say you're doing it on your, your boat fuel tank, something like that, you'd really want to give it three coats there. But two, that's normally plenty for a car one. See near how it really has just uh, flowed out. It's probably about five minutes since that bit there was painted, and that's where it's flowed out to. Now we've let that sit for a while. One thing I have done though is I've come back and I've I've worked a bit of the, the paint through the brush just to make sure that doesn't go off while the rest of it has gone hard. So we're going to give it its second coat now, so this will be all we'll need to do on this one. Now, this puts a, an external coating on what's already done internally. With this one we did have to fix up some leaks, but cheap insurance really. I've got another one I'm putting together, a 41 pickup, which has got an old um, Holden 1 tonner type fuel tank in it. I'm going to coat that one as well. Don't have to do any repairs, but I'm still going to do the same internal coating process because well, it's around about 100 bucks for the kit, and um, that's cheaper than getting somebody out if it does break down through a through a block fuel filter or or rubbish in the in the lines that sort of thing. So we'll get that one done. If you want to know any more about any of what we have done on this fuel tank or a lot of the other stories that we do uh, do on cruising where we can't put all the details, contact details, and that sort of thing up, just visit our website because we do try to put links there to uh, any of the companies that give us a hand with any, any of the stories we put together, any of our sponsors, that sort of thing. So, like I say, you can go to the website, that's cruising.com.au. Don't forget the I in cruising, or the two I's, C-R-U-I-Z-I-N. And uh, you can find out any more about anything else you want to know. See a few dents, no brush marks.